Thanks for coming. My name is Don Aslett. I was raised in a little Idaho farm by Twin Falls, Idaho. I went to school at Idaho State University. Put an ad in the paper, Don Aslett, professional cleaner. I never even made my bed before that. First rug I did, I used 40 gallons of boiling hot water in that rug, and it shrunk about this far away from the wall. So I ruined a few things, starting to hire one student, two students, ten students, worked all the way through college that way. I was married, played ball for Idaho State, bought a home, ran a business. We had six kids in that seven years going to school, so I was very busy. But I cleaned toilets straight and started to clean business. And I'm 80 years old now, but I've been cleaning for 60 years. I've learned a little bit, so we're going to share a little bit with that uh, today. Just a few things. If I'm a little rummy, I just had 25 kids from high school for two hours. And st you start at 4 in the morning, you get pretty tired by now. But th there's a lot of principles. One of my first big principles I started teaching was that uh, however you spend nine years of your life or five years of life cleaning, you gotta, if you get rid of it, you start cleaning like the pros. You start cleaning like the pros and not cleaning at home. And the world's full of old wives' tales. Vinegar, for, you know, why do we use vinegar? Because it squeaks, and people think things squeak, they're clean and everything. But they're just, there's basic principles. For instance, the biggest principle of cleaning, the biggest principle of cleaning is a three-letter word called now, N-O-W. You make your bed now, or you clean the hot cake dough off the top of the thing now. It takes you about three seconds to do it. You wait till afternoon or wait till Saturday morning. It'll take you ten minutes, plus you're scrubbing, you're wearing out stuff, you're using a lot of cleaning and everything. So now is a big thing. And there's just some simple, simple, simple rules. I'll give you one of the most easy ones right here. This is a piece of cardboard. You take a you take a plain water and vinegar and water. You can spray on that and that'll be gone in a minute. You take a it's cleaner, any type of cleaner, it's called a surfactant. And you start looking at the difference. You can go all day working with water and vinegar and cheap stuff. You won't do a bit of good. A little bit of cleaner on stuff will that's what's called a surfactant. You know that when you wash your car, you'll see something, something that bubbles up out while you wash it. You do your car and everything, it'll just sheet over. Put a little bit of cleaner in it and it instantly becomes flat. The water becomes wetter and you just clean it in the middle. So you do need cleaners. To get rid of the old, first thing you clean, get rid of the old wives' tails. The number one thing, all the old wives' tails, get them to go. Baking soda, vinegar, all those people are still using them. In 1920 they went away, in 1950 they went away. And I still get calls from magazines all over the world. Don, can we use baking soda to do that? Oh, give me a break. Let me, let me do that. So quit watching that. They're, they're making new stuff, but there's just a simple, simple thing. You use good things like that. It penetrates. You wash windows, you wash walls, you clean carpet. It releases dirt. And plain other, all this other vinegar and all this other stuff like this is just, just zero to do it. A little tiny thing. I'll give you a good principle on the simplest one. Everybody, I don't do windows. I hate people to say that. So what do you do, George? I don't do windows. You know, windows are easy to do. But so how do people do windows? People get the old way, they get the old thing, the old rag, and they get the newspaper and the old stuff, and they get up and they go out in the window and they spray the window, and snort, 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 and work on that thing and everyone, and then they get through and they spray some more, and all of a sudden they look back and what do they have? I can't hear you. Streaks. Streaks, but I'll show that right there, scratching the sun, and the sun comes up. <laughs> more streaks and everything else. Newspaper, vinegar, all that stuff went away from windows. Clean windows like a pro, ten times as fast. You can make you can make hundred dollars an hour. You can do it fast. I'll give you the simple principle: hard to sell. Clean is a hard sell. We punish our kids with a little snot behavior. I'll clean your room, you know. <laughs> and your teachers and professors are no no downing that, but they say you guys better grow up and you better learn a security. You'll grow up and be a janitor, like you know we're we're we've got leprosy and everything. Well, that's what I am. But you can do stuff fast. You can make good money, but you can clean fast. And it's just been five years of your life cleaning. You can clean in one. So how do the professionals do windows? Very simple. I'm just give you a thing. First, do they get first do they get water? Is the water hot or is the water cold? I love this. All the macho people going hot, hot, and I don't say anything. Then all the chickens come in cold, cold. And then all the politicians come in warm. And everything else. So basically, though, it doesn't matter. That water, the instant that water is out, I think it becomes room temperature. So all these years, you've been. Putting your hand in, burning all the hair off your hand hasn't really counted that much. So, what are you, what are you using that water? Come on now, you guys are participating now. Your teacher's grading you now, you participate. What do you put in here? Warm. What kind of soap do you put in here? None. See, isn't this interesting? All of you should know. Yeah, you do. If you don't put anything in, the water will beat up and it won't clean anything. And most people say, well, you put ammonia or put vinegar. Less. Vinegar, people like it because it squeaks. So we use a thing called, we use a thing called X161B-492, which is joy. 
And I went to clean, clean, we clean in New York City, all those things we're using. We use Don, but we can't spell Don, but we can spell Joy. So they always have this little adage, if a little does well, then a lot. Come on, a lot does better. better. Yeah. Wrong. Actually, the more you use, the worse it does. So in a whole bucket of water, a dollar's worth of joy will clean your windows for the rest of your life. Look at a couple of you, 50 cents will do. So <laughs> we put just a drop or two in a whole dish of water. We're just trying to make the water wetter. Now notice something. There's one guy's got a sense of humor here. But notice in cleaning, it is fun. And if you make cleaning fun, it doesn't ever work. So and I never worked a day in my life, no matter how many hours you work, if you do the cleaning. So the water is ready to do it. So then... It's very easy to do. You get a thing called a squeegee. They'll cost you about $12, $10, $12, $15, whatever they are. A squeegee to do the water. And you, you dip the thing, you dip the thing in the water like this. Very simple. Boy, you guys can't, this, this, the background is really bad to see the window. You're not seeing it there like you need to. But you get around the window. It's fast. It's easy. You're not baptized. You hardly have any water coming down here. Now, when you guys squeegeed before, you pushed the squeegee too hard and you did that and when you came down the what big water dripped come dripping down behind you and everything else like this. So the first thing you do, you get in the window. And remember the water is wetter, it's dissolving stuff. It's cleaning all the goots and the garbage and everything else. You tilt the ski squeegee off the window, go right across the top like this, with the little like that, and you clean that much you clean that much dry on the top. Sorry you can't pick this up on your camera, but it is. And then whenever I do windows, I always stampen the cloth that I'm using to do the windows. Why do I do that? So you wipe the squeegee blade so the squeegee blade is lubricated because if it isn't lubricated, you get it on the window and it goes, gippy, 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 gippy. And that is, that's is worse than a geepy and squeegee. You have no class if you geepy. So you wipe it with a dry blade, then you put it right in that dry area, and then you pull it down, keep your hand close to the glass, you pull it down like that. Maybe the bottom, very simple, that window will be so perfectly clean, the window will be so perfectly clean that you can't, you can't do it. And also, if I do that and I can't get down here like this where, where, I'm, where you're sitting right down here, I turn the squeegee and go this way and, and come back and you do that way like that. You know, that's just a simple, simple, simple way to keep your hand close to the glass. But when you, after you've done this about three or four times, you do windows, you just put the window right, you do it like that, fast like that. You got it all like that. And then you get, a, you get another squeeze, smaller squeegee. I, go, I don't put a clear up the top because nobody's going to see up that way anyway. Put the squeegee up and pull it like that. Pull it down like that, 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 that. that. And pull it across like that and you'll squeeze your window just in minutes and it'll be dead clean. Now one way to know your window is clean, if you leave a spot on it anywhere, if you leave a spot on it, don't buy that one, if you leave a spot on it anywhere, guess what? How do you get the spot off? What? Do what? Clean it again? No, it'll take you too long. So you do one little you might be bound to the audience, one little drop goes doink right there, how do you get it off? Your bare hand, right now the time the oils are out of your hand, you have your bare hand like this, you go up there and you go dunk 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 and It'll wipe it right off, and they'll think you're a witch, maybe, but boy, it just cleans the spot right off. The <laughs> and so what most people do, they do the wrong thing. That, that squeegee, that squeegee, you can see a professional squeegee. See that little, see that little end right there in the professional squeegee? Do that, and take some B-roll of that. See that little thing that's holding that back right there? That holds that blade tight, and that's really close like that. Well, when you do that, that clings to the edge, but there might be a tiny, tiny bit in the edge. So what do people do? They take this thing like that, and they go, now what do you have? Again. A streak. So, oh, we get to make the perfect compressed ball right now. Now what do you have? A bigger, bigger streak. streak. Leave it alone. People will never see it. They'll have to walk to the perfect place and go, yeah, like that. And I would let anybody in my house like that anyway if they try to do that like that. Interesting way. How do you sell if you have a clean window? The trouble is when you clean windows the old way, the newspaper it left it sticky. And you ever notice, you ever notice the, the beetles and the bugs and everything what are, on, the, on the windowsill? What are they? What condition are they in? They're dead. They all die. They start to, because they can walk around on that thing anywhere and they finally die of old age. When you start cleaning your windows, guess what? You're going to look on there and you're going to see ants and, and boogers or you're going to see ants and gnats and everything down there with broken legs and broken arms because that thing is so slick when they light on it, they go, ah! And they go down and they break their legs when they hit the stupid thing like that. Funny, but it's, that means when it's slick, clean windows don't get dirty as fast as, if you clean windows like that, they stay cleaner longer. Does that make sense to you? So you, buy, you can buy window clean stuff very cheap, buy one, use it as fast, it's easy. Everybody will have one, you'll use, as I said, in a lifetime, probably 50 cents worth of joy, probably in your whole life to use it. And of course, I like these double buckets like this. They're a little fast. Another big, another huge one, the best thing's not best, the secret of housework besides now is not have to do it. Guess what the best cleaning tool ever made is by far, without anything? 
Starts with an M. Mom. Oh, 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 mom. Boy, if you were on TV, they'd crucify you. I remember when I was doing Regis once, I said, my wife's vacuum. Uh, mop? Oh, it's pretty good. It's closer than hers. He said it's you. He said, well, you're a dummy, too. Oh, okay. No, there's a thing called, what do you think this thing is called? Uh, Mass. Mm. Absolutely unbelievable. They've done tests now that 80% of the dirt that comes in your house, everything comes in your house, is comes in through the front door. And you, if you have a mat and you wipe your feet on the mat like this and do it, everything else, you will cut down more of their, on the inside, uh, one of these on the outside to knock the gravel off, on the inside a cloth mat. Absolutely unreal. I was cleaning a building in Sun Valley, Idaho, a place where we kept the junk every night. We'd sweep out the hospital. No mats. We put mats in there. We'd get this much stuff every night instead of that much. That means you have to re-rack the floor, you have to sweep it more, you have to re-rack it, it costs you, I mean, vacuum bags, dust bags, everything else makes a real difference. So this is really, this is good. And all, another thing, to use, and use professional tools. <coughs> okay, what did I do with my spray bottle? Here it is. Interesting, very simple thing, isn't it? How do they work? Do you think there's anything magic about a spray bottle? Buy commercials, a couple dollars spray bottle. So what did you flinch for? You're in, now, this is important. I'm showing you things that save you a lot of time. You know, I can show you all the trinkets, but there's just some basic things. When you get inside your shower, if you're, the, more people are hurt cleaning, breathing, and everything. If you're inside your shower, you hear that thing, man, it's going to kill you, right? Did you know if you turn that thing like this once and twice, you now have, oh, oh I, I missed you on purpose. I hit the stuff like that, but see that? Did you know that's what these are on there? So, so when you're inside of a shower and you're moving stuff, you spray and, and hit things like that. When you're out there, you turn that thing back like that, and, and then you can atomize. It's just a simple thing. People didn't know about spray bottles. So another thing, you do a lot of stuff when you spray. A lot of stuff you don't spray open like this. You don't spray stuff like this. Most of the time when you clean, you spray into the cloth. And then you clean the cloth like that to do it. Everything else makes a, makes a world of difference to do it. So just a simple little spray bottle. There's a lot of principles. Oh, by the way, something I, I, I hate to go really straight back, but I want to give you something really interesting. When you are doing windows, the birds fly by in the manure of birds. There's gravel and everything out of there, things like that, or the stuff sticks on windows and sticky stuff like that. And every time you or somebody's painted and you have a thing on windows, guess what? I'm going to tell you something that's going to save you lawsuits and windows. You get a razor blade scraper, and people do that. When people scrape, guess what they scrape? They scrape like this. So yeah, we all scrape. It's just a natural thing to scrape, and you'll see the stuff come out wrong, because guess what happens? I learned this. I run on the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I run the whole side of that building of windows. This little uh, cement was on for the mortar. Because when you come, when you go frontwards, you scrape okay, but when you come backwards, you get a little piece of gravel underneath here. Just a little tiny piece underneath there. And when you go backwards, yeah, you'll, you'll draw and ruin your glass. So when you scrape a window, you scrape only one way. You'll save so I went. It took me 30 years to learn that, and you guys will learn it in five seconds to so scrape a window. Good, a good job to do this. Now there's two types of window cleaning. If you do, you can do like I showed you that way, like it, or you can if you do a quart of water. You can buy now. The modern thing is now we're talking about the environment. You were saying clean. Now things are different before us. Soaps and waters or cleaners are much better than they were 10 years ago. Surfaces, these carpets are 10 times better than they were because of soil master and everything else. Environment cleaners, no beetle cellulose, all these cleaners are safe. These things are designed, each one of these, to make a whole quart. It's just like the stuff right here. It's a whole quart of bathroom cleaners. They're disinfecting each one of these. That's how much, folks, that's how much disinfectant is in a whole quart of water when you go to Walmart or buy something. See that little bit? Fifteenth of an ounce, probably. That's what's in a bottle of the bathroom cleaner. The rest is water and plastic that we throw away. Terrible, terrible. You, buy, you, you could buy an a all-purpose cleaner like, like this one right here, pay three or four dollars, two dollars, probably last you four or five months because you only need a few drops in the water to do it. So buy concentrates, another thing to clean That's a big thing to make a note. Buy, buy concentrates because they, they make a real difference to do it. So that's what you're going to see today where you're going to buy all your cleaners. In fact, right here, I give a little, generally when I teach, I give a kit. It's almost six. This is almost six months supply. This is all this heavy duty cleaner, window glass cleaner like mirrors. If you have little tiny windows, you don't squeegee them. If you're little, you use them in a spray bottle so nobody sees the streaks. And this cleans your bathroom, disinfects your toilet and the bathroom and everything else. So basically, I mean, when you really think about it, look at this. This is just blow them away. 20 years or 30 years, we have gallons and buckets and everything else. This is it. Take that home right there in your purse. 
about six months worth of cleaning. You can do your cleaning with that. And you plus, so then when you get through, guess what? You don't have <laughs> jugs and bottles and everything else. Whole portion pack. It's a great thing. Thanks. This stuff's been out for quite a while, but it takes the public a long time to do this. And that's the hardest thing. The hardest thing in life is to sell the public on things. To do it. Give you one more last thing on windows. You can't reach them. You know how many people get hurt cleaning and everything else? You can't reach the windows up there. Guess what there is? You find guys now in Denver things called a, it's called a super system. It's kind of a neat little system. Never could get these new ones to work like I like them. You can't if you if you're way down low. The only way a squeegee works is if a squeegee comes. The only way a squeegee works is if it comes down like this. You can't squeegee cross like this or involve everything else like that. So if you're way down and you can't reach a window back up here, these things these things angle. But they also tilt. You go this way, or you can go back like this, and you can get along where you never could get that. It's like right here. Say I'm way down here. Say I'm way down here, and I can't reach up in a window. I can reach clear up. I can reach. I can't get over that window to clean like that. So I can put. The, I can put the thing over to bring see that. So bring the hint. What did I? Those are neat. called super system. They're cheap. Neatest thing you can possibly buy. But it's a pro tool. You know, somebody will go down and blow two hundred dollars on a ticket to a football game, or the Outback restaurant or something like that. And it's just amazing. They wouldn't spend fifteen dollars or twenty dollars on a set like this. Unreal how we value money. And you start thinking what your time is worth. You have to take that off there. I can't get that. Good. There's a lot of little tools that do a lot of little things, but there's also ma magic cloth. Anybody know what kind of cloth this is? Carry cloth. This is this is really interesting, group. You know, I take for granted. We all know. About 10, 25, 26 years ago, two guys showed up from Austria and Germany. They were from uh, Austria and Germany. Guys that spit on you when they talk. like that. And they had one cloth, one microfiber cloth. They wanted thirty dollars. Really, what what are Mike price now? Three, two, three dollars. Two or three dollars. They wanted thirty bucks for this one microfiber. Then I was doing Oprah, and I was doing all the big. I was doing thousands of TV and all the stuff like I thought I knew everything. And I was, get out of here, you two losers! That stuff doesn't work. And they left. Guess who the biggest microfiber seller? This is the most unreal cloth in the world. I just, I don't know who invented how it is. You get a good microfiber, right? You just, unbelievable what this stuff does. Microfiber cloths just take, where it really, really worked was for years and years and years doing floors, everybody scrubbed their hands. These you never, never, never get on. I haven't got any too much stuff, so I'm going to do this on the, on the back. On the, on the back. Uh, for years and years, 3M came up with a tool call this uh, scrubby do we call it I have I don't have a little one of these but it basically what we did we just put the water in the stuff and the people got one of these poles <coughs> they could scrub the floor I could beat you know those little buffers you guys have you know like that I could beat you I could take seven of you all eight of you with the buffer with those buffers and I could beat you with this too phenomenal 3m had a patent on this thing and it was really good and boy you could scrub the floor and then I'd squeeze it up and everything else it's really good so as years went on, we started figuring out a dumb, dumb old Don here, after I told the guy to get out of here with the microfiber, I wasn't smart to figure this out. Some lady figured this out, and it was a, maybe you did, I don't know, but she found, so why not put a microfiber pad on the bottom of the floor like that, put it so it sticks on these, put that thing on it like that. That is the finest mop. They're about what, twenty-five dollars, twenty-three dollars. I'd pay three hundred dollars for this because these didn't. Ha I didn't have these twenty years, thirty years ago. If you have a little tiny kid, give them a little short one. They can do all the mopping. If you guy has to be big as that guy, you can do the tall stuff. Absolutely unreal. Even in where they were using the big flop mops now in most places. Even in my company, we cl I clean about I clean big millions of plants across the country. We're starting to find this the fastest thing. You just walk into your kitchen. You don't need a big mop bucket full of stuff that tips over. You just walk in. Sweep the kitchen floor. Take a take a quarter cleaner. Spray it on your floor. Or a cleaner like this. Put that step down. On your, put that down on your floor. And where you go and mop the floor or something like that. Amazing what do you do. Know, if the floor is really a lot of good good and boogers and everything on the floor, and I take it up to the sink. Just pull this thing in the sink in about two seconds. Hold it under the sink. Squeeze. That sounds primitive, but boy, sure beats hands and knees. And squeeze <laughs> that thing about three times like that. Plop it back on the floor. Put that thing back in. Ten times faster. Never get on my hands and knees and I clean on the side or anything else. Another twenty bucks and the other still people. That's a Swiffer, you know. People see this stuff. 
those Swiffers, one pass with those Swiffers, those cloths, and it's, it's useless. I mean, you can't, you can't buy, so there's just new, new stuff like that. Also, I even invented a, I love my little cart, and I have a hard time getting people to buy a little cart like this, but these are, these little cart, I can keep all my stuff on there. Before we go, before we move, there's an, uh, another tool that, uh, well, let me ask you, Don, about you squeegeeing the floor. That seems like a really good idea. Do you no longer do that? Well, yeah, I do it. If you're doing, if you, that's good. That's, thank you for the question. That's a good question. If you, most of time I'm talking about here is about mopping. I'm talking about uh, hold that. I'm just talking about mopping the floor. <laughs> Where did my? Oh, duh. <laughs> I told you I was so tired. If your floor needs scrubbed, then we get one of these. You get one of these pads like this, and you can find and buy these. This is nylon pads. These are better than cloth or steel wool or anything else. These nylon pads are really good. You get this thing like this, and you throw the stuff out on the floor. Your cleaner water, whatever it is, you can buy that, whatever it is, and then you scrub the floor like this. It'll get gunky and everything else. Then I get a squeegee. I get a bigger, I get a bigger squeegee. And maybe I can't see one here, but I get and I squeegee the floor up. Because you mop and mop and mop and change water and mop. You know what I'm saying? Squeegee the floor up like everything. I pick it up in a dustpan. Put away, and I have that floor totally, almost totally clean, even without mopping it. Dump, they go ahead and dump the dustpan over a neighbor's fence, and you're on your way to do it. So then I put a coat of wax or something on the floor. By the way, you can wax and do floors. Okay, come here. You're smarter than you look. I'm pretty, pretty <laughs> impressed. That's a floor squeegee. Boy, I'll tell you, we, do, just, we figured that out years ago from the old way we used to do it. We figured pretty fast to do the grocery stores when we were college students. We'd mop those big floors and just mop, 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 and rinse and mop. Boy, finally we just found out take these big squeegees and you just squeeze that hole out of the floor and it'd go down and just, I didn't even wet dry it up, I just picked it up in a dustpan and throw it out. To, uh, thank you, it's, it's appreciate doing that. Didn't you even at one point eat off the floor on television to show how clean it was? Well, I might have mentioned that, I don't think I had to. I, I'd eat off the toilet seat once, I don't think that, because you know when you clean them, by the way, where's the dirtiest place in your house? Doorknobs. Well, Doorknobs. Doorknob is, you touch that, cough in that, pick your nose, scratch your butt, you know, everything else, and, and uh, this is the doorknob on there, so it is. But you know, this next dirty place in the house, it's just the most amazing thing people ever think about is the refrigerator door. As soon as you get sick, you're barfing and you got germ and everything, you go to the refrigerator and get the stuff out of the refrigerator. <laughs> Nobody ever thinks in that refrigerator. Is, you go home on doorknobs, you go home today with a cleaner, any type of cleaner, you spray your doorknobs, and you also spray the refrigerator door and use a white cloth and you wipe it down, you'll freak out. You, you can't believe how bad that stuff is to do. Again, you know what I'm talking about? These are uh, lamb's wool. There's ones that look just like that or nylon. They sold seven million of these on HSN or on things, terrible things. They magnetized stuff up and they weren't good, but the lamb's wools are really good, especially if you get one. What are these, about six, seven bucks? These are things you can get these up. They'll pick up dead boogers and grease and oil, and we use them on the fans, and we use them in radiators like down here. Anytime you don't have to get on a ladder, I'll give you some good points. Anytime you don't have to get on a ladder, more people fall off ladders trying to clean and everything else you're not used to. Never stand on a chair. Never stand on a chair. Most of your weight is from here up to the head up. You get on a chair, they turn around, you're going down. So you start learning after a lot of falls and a lot of people getting hurt and everything else. This is called a uh, lamb's roll. Remember, get the lamb's roll, don't get the plastic things. They're not, they're not very good. So we're going to move in a minute to a couple of things. There's a lot of, there's a lot of good, great tools. I'll show you. Kind of, you know, knowing how to clean, you can figure these things out. Knowing how to clean is, I love this brush. Do we have these still? <laughs> what a thing to ask right there. Well, they're seven bucks. <laughs> For, if you're married, before you buy a bed or a Bible or anything else, you buy one of these. I'm telling you, when you spray everything, when you scrub things, uh, you had these old scrub brushes, terrible old things. You hold in your hand, they're three or four or five dollars. <laughs> 